Hi, this is Jay with the Pool Tech. Got a uh, Whisper Flow pump here. It's a humming. And they come out, and I'm not sure why it's a humming. They said just put on variable speed, but you can hear it. We got power to it. She's humming. First thing we want to check, we know we got some power. Sometimes, if they're not getting, if they get 110 instead of 220, they'll run, but run half speed. Because she's doing nothing, the first thing I want to check here is the uh, see if the shaft is free it's we got it's either going to be a stuck shaft a star capacitor or the motor windings are burn up so this model here you can get to this end pretty easy on these later model century AO Smith motors um, I'm just gonna take it and you know you go to spin this you should be able to spin it just with your thumb and your forefinger and uh, it's not wanting to turn, so I'm thinking we need to take it apart. If you're in a shop, an impact wrench is nice for taking this stuff off. I would never put it back together with an impact wrench. It's just got too much torque. But to strip this stuff down, um, that's perfectly fine to take them apart. Okay, six bolts, the whisper flow should separate the housing from the seal plate. There she goes. I'm going to go ahead and pull the housing out, get it out of the way. This is the diffuser of the pump, uh, diffuser o-ring. Sometimes these things get stretched out a little bit. As long as they stick on and go back in, it doesn't really matter. They just keep water from passing through. Um, if you want to put one in, fine. If you don't, you can see they just they kind of turn black pretty quick. So we have two screws that hold the diffuser on. Uh, they're Allen head screws. We take those out, and that'll get the diffuser off of here. You could use a pair of pliers if you had to to get to this. It does have a head on it. It doesn't have to be an Allen screw. It's just diffuser plate and now that exposes the impeller. This thing, boy, you can feel it. It just, it's turning hard. Something, I think a bearing or something locked up in this thing. It's just, it's not the impeller. It doesn't look like the impeller is clogged, but just to keep going further, to get the impeller off of here and do a seal job. This is a left-handed thread. This uh, little screw in here is reverse or left-handed. And that has to be taken out first. If you try to unscrew the impeller without taking this out, um, you're just going to end up tightening this. And it's kind of made if the pump turns off real quick. Sometimes the motor can spin backwards if the power has been shut off and on real quick. And it starts spinning backwards, and then it just runs backwards, and then it can spin the impeller off. And believe me, I've seen it happen. You'll just spin this off. It'll take this diffuser. It'll break it. It'll mess up the threads on the end. And that's just a whole nother mess in itself. With a half inch end wrench on this particular century motor, we just want to hold this shaft so we can get this impeller off of here. I'm going to try it with my hand. I'm holding the back. It came off. If not, um, a big pair of channel locks out here. You don't want to grab this inner piece here, but. If you had to and you couldn't, the biggest channel locks made, the 16 inch ones, you could take, get around out of here, and you could put that around there and spin that off if you had to. It's a little bit, uh, no, you just want to be careful. But this in here, this goes up against the diffuser, which is this piece here, and this is performance. If, if this is messed up and worn, and this is worn in here. This is where water is able to pass through and go in a circle. Impeller off, we expose the pump seal. We've got one end that's up on the seal plate. We've got the other end that's up in the impeller. Uh, what we're going to do right now is take and we can now, because we have the impeller everything off of here, can pull the four bolts off and go ahead and separate the motor from the seal plate itself.
Sometimes if these have been leaking, these bottom ones can be real bad. Uh, I don't think it's got much any, it looks pretty good. But sometimes the bottom, this has got a little bit of water. You can see it, that bolt, see the, see the scale built up on the threads? You know, clean bolts, everything's just like that. But uh, you see in water, scale, especially our hard water, you see it. So let's go ahead and take this, let's just pop off the seal plate. And you can see even a little bit of the scale that's up in here. What you look for in here is to see if there's any cracks. If these inserts, these are brass inserts that are put into this seal plate. If you see cracks around any of these areas here, it's something you're going to want to replace. You can see, you know, pump seals, they leak from time to time. They'll leak and then they stop or they'll seep a little bit. And this is not uncommon to see. Um, biggest thing is the motor. If you look at the front of the motor and what kind of damage do we have on the motor itself, it's seen some water and I'm taking it that it's this front bearing that's locked up that's causing this thing. This one's funny. It goes one way. <laughs> It'll spin backwards, but it won't spin forward. So we got the motor up on a vise. Nice place just to have it to support it. 5 16 bolts on these going in. Most everything we've ever had. 5 16 11 30 seconds, quarter inch. I've just got a, a drill here. And let's get these four bolts out of here. We're going to end up separating these end bells from the main motor casing. Pull these out. You got your four through bolts. As far as microing, when you pull off these end bells, um, everything has to line like it was. And there's holes that go through here, so either you can put the bolts in a line, or probably an easier way. is to just take and put your little mark on there if you want. So you could just take a pencil, put your line across the end bell here, put your line across the front end bell here. Doesn't help you if you end up having to replace it, but it ain't going to want to pop out. So tap, 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 tap. And she's just about, if you have to, you can come on the other side. There's actually two spots on these centuries that you can just take. Once you get it to expose and show itself, normally it's just a matter of taking some screwdrivers. And you can wiggle it back and forth slowly. Okay, there we go. Wiggle, wiggle. We keep wiggling with a couple screwdrivers. There we go, we're off. So we end up with the end bell, which is going to slide out. There's some stuff in here. We can blow this, vacuum this out. Um, and here we have this bearing, obviously, isn't the one that's seized up. Now we have to take off up here the front bell. This is a square flange, easiest way. You can tap here if you're careful. You just don't want to round something out where the bearing's not going to come off. On a square flange like this, you can just take and tap. It's just a couple taps to get it apart in the end bell. And if you see, I'm trying to spin this here. It's actually this bearing. This bearing is locked up to where, oh, it wants to spin one way. It'll spin this way, but if you try to spin it that way, it's a one-way bearing. 